Hey everybody, Dr. Christine Kazmar here, The Digestion Doc, coming at you with another video talking about all things digestion. My whole job is to help people regain their freedom from the crappiest, yes crappiest, health conditions like Crohn's, colitis, IBS, and so on. <laughs> and today I want to talk to you about constipation. And uh, you know, constipation is one of those common things that people come to see me for right behind more of a loose stool complaint like uh, Crohn's or colitis or things like that. And that's simply because people have that urgency and so they wanna make sure that they know where the nearest bathrooms are and it's, it's something that's gonna bring people to come see me much sooner than as a constipation complaint. But really quickly before I get into any of that, did you know that I have a texting community where you get a special unique piece of content from me on Saturdays around 10.35 in the morning. If you are interested in that, it's totally free. I'm gonna send you a little video about something about uh, emotional stress or, or a story that's gonna help you combat something going on in your life. And um, they're really fun. And the only people that get these videos, the only people that get the videos that I'm sending on Saturday are those that are in my Saturday society. How do you get there? Just text digestion, all lowercase, to the number 844-979-0254. And that's it. Just sit back and relax. And uh, every Saturday you're gonna get my little, my little video. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to it. Constipation, where does it come from? Well, I wanna to talk to you about three common things that uh, may be a contributing factor to constipation. And we're gonna start off with undigested food. Undigested food and deficient stomach acid Quite frankly, these are the number two, one and two things that people have more than any other that contribute to so many different overwhelming digestive stresses from stiff, stiff achy joints to headache, to heartburn, to diarrhea, to nausea, to constipation. This can be traced back to undigested food and deficient stomach acid. So let's tackle undigested food first, shall we? If you are not properly chewing your food, if you are drinking too much alcohol, if you are drinking uh, any amount of liquid that's over eight ounces that happens to have a lot of ice to it, you're going to slow down and stagnate digestion. By not properly chewing your food, you are now putting a greater burden on your, on your stomach because your stomach doesn't have teeth, right? I mean, that's nothing new that I'm revealing here, but your stomach doesn't have teeth. So we need to do our job chewing our food so thoroughly that we are giving a chance to mix the salivary amylases, salivary lipases, and salivary proteases to a lesser degree on, on the latter two. Mostly you have salivary amylases, which are digestive enzymes. There are three categories of enzymes, just so you know. There are food enzymes, which you'll find in plants. There are digestive enzymes that start in your saliva. They're in your stomach, they're in your intestines, and so on, your pancreas. And then you have metabolic enzymes, which are in every single cell of the body. So back to food enzymes, plant enzymes, once we cook our food over 118 degrees Fahrenheit, the enzymes are gone. They are now devoid of that special content. And in that first 45 minutes of digestion, that's a magical opportunity. It's a magical window called pre-digestion. You see, it takes 45 minutes in a healthy individual for hydrochloric acid to come into the stomach. So you got the hydrogen ions, you've got the chloride ions, they're coming together like Voltron and they are mixed in the stomach and they are going to help to digest protein. Fats and carbohydrate digestion, that really begins in those 45 minutes primarily. And when you mix the food enzymes by chewing properly and the digestive enzymes from the saliva, you've got 45 minutes to digest your food. In some cases, after one hour, your food is up to 80% pre-digested before it even hits the small intestine. People, what does that mean? It means that there is much more available energy for the body to do its magical healing work. The body has so much it has to do and digestion is very taxing on the gut. So when it comes to constipation, it sounds so simple, but properly chewing your food is key. Not diluting that digestive power with too much liquid is key. Now here's the second thing, deficient stomach acid. Most people who have a heartburn complaint or a reflux type complaint, I can completely understand why you think that you're making too much acid, but that's just not how it is. In a rare, super rare occurrence that you might have some kind of a tumor, the hypothalamus knows exactly when to shut the switch off to bring that acid in from the blood. You've got hydrogen, chloride coming together like Voltron, like I said, to make hydrochloric acid, which its main purpose is to begin the process of digesting proteins, that healing nutrient proteins are. But here's what happens. 
People take proton pump inhibitors. They take antacids. Uh, they'll take opioids. They'll take even laxatives, uh, any kind of NSAID. These are types of drugs that are known to constipate the body. And the, the two drugs I started with, the antacids and the proton pump inhibitors especially, just like you would think, antacid means blocking acid. When you block acid, clearly you're making deficient stomach acid, but you are now also turning off the switch to digest protein and absorb minerals. Yes, that's what I'm saying to you. You need that acidic content in the stomach from the stomach acid to get about a 2.0 pH. That pH scale is from zero to 14. Seven is right smack dab in the, in the middle and that is neutral or water. At its greatest acidity, 2.0, that's when magic happens for the initiation or that switch to be turned on to digest your protein and also to absorb your minerals. It's elegant, it's elegant. But when you dampen that process by taking a proton pump inhibitor or taking uh, an antacid, now you're maybe around a 5.0 pH or something of this nature. Therefore, you're not gonna have that proper acid to flip on the switch to digest protein and absorb minerals. But it gets worse. When it comes to constipation, here's what happens. Pretend that there's a sensor and that sensor is somewhere around your gallbladder and part of your beginning of your small intestine, the duodenum. If there is not a lot of acidic content coming into that small intestine, the gallbladder is not gonna squirt bile like it would like to because it's not registering on that sensor that there's a lot of acidity coming in because you've taken away that acidity by taking this proton pump inhibitor like Nexium, Protonix, Omeprazole, and so on. Does that make sense? Because as stomach acid is the most acidic thing in the human body, bile is the most alkaline thing in the human body. But bile has many functions. Not only is bile going to neutralize the acid coming in from the stomach into the small intestine, rightfully so, but bile is also going to degrade bacteria in the GI tract that don't belong or that are in the inadequate amounts. Bile is also going to give the, help give the form to the stool to some extent. Bile is gonna to help to create the color of the stool to some extent. So when that sensor does not register acidity like it, like it usually would, it's then not going to secrete that bile. It's gonna cause that bile to really be unused and it's going to start to thicken. The more bile thickens, the greater the chance of constipation, the greater the chance of having gallstones, the greater the chance of having cholesterol dumped into your blood and having an elevated cholesterol. So when it comes to cholesterol, we've got HDL, we've got LDL. LDL is what is considered the bad cholesterol, which I don't really like that term because nothing about the body is bad. The creator of our body, that, that, that power, whatever your beliefs happen to be, we all can for sure agree that the body knows how to heal itself. I would hope that you would agree with that. You cut your arm, you cut your wrist, whatever, the body knows how to like send clotting agents to the area, sew up the tissue. We don't have to think about that. We don't have to think about our, our heart beating. We don't have to think about our lungs filling with air. We don't have to really think about a lot of things, thankfully, right? Because this superpower running the body is the best doctor of all, the one that resides within. When we don't have that proper stomach acid, when we, when we have that undigested food, that can easily lead to constipation. And that's a problem because bile has everything to do with running your bowel movements. But when we go to cholesterol now, because that bile has accumulated, that cholesterol now is also being dumped into the blood like I said, we have the HDL and we have the LDL. HDL means high density lipoprotein. LDL means low density lipoprotein. So notice the word protein is in that word. HDL, high density lipoprotein. LDL, low density lipoprotein. So what did I just mention earlier? When I said it comes to proteins, it's your healing nutrient. But I also said that proteins get a lot of their digestion to occur in the stomach if acid is present. So let's take this back a little bit, shall we? When you now are taking that proton pump inhibitor or that antacid, again, you might be impacting your cholesterol numbers. It's all connected. It's all connected, folks. So we've talked about undigested food. We've talked about, and by the way, the only thing that digests undigested food are enzymes, okay? The enzymes in our foods and the digestive enzymes. And you can't take a carbohydrate enzyme and expect it to digest a fat or a protein. You can't take a fat enzyme like a lipase and expect it to digest a carb or a protein. It doesn't work that way. Fat enzymes digest fats, carb enzymes digest carbs, 
protein enzymes digest proteins and so on. Undigested food, deficient stomach acid, and what's next then is the fiber situation. So fiber, are, they're found in plants. We need fiber. Fiber does amazing things. We have soluble fiber. We have insoluble fiber. Insoluble fiber, like, just like you would expect, something that your body can't get rid of, and so you excrete it, right? To an extent, you do soluble fiber, but soluble fiber and insoluble fiber are necessary to keep things moving and to bulk up the stool. Fiber, how much should you be consuming? It's a different amount for every person, but a gauge between 20 to 40 grams a day. Great sources of fiber come from your plants, of course. So your fruits and your vegetables, your peas, your beans, your lentils, these are great sources of fiber. So aim for 20 to 40 grams per day. These are the top three reasons that I wanna review with you about why you may be constipated. Now, what does that mean? Let's say that you are constipated. What does that even look like? What is constipation? Constipation, in my view, is either A, having a hard time pushing out a bowel movement, B, when you have bowel movements, they're coming out like little pebbles all the time, not like every now and then, maybe if you have that like once a month or something, no big deal, but if on a regular basis, you're constantly having little pebbles come out, that's constipation. If you are having a hard time getting it to come out, constipation. If you're having pebbles, constipation. If you are skipping days, constipation, okay? How then do we rectify this? Well, we make sure that we're digesting our food properly. We make sure that stomach acid is sufficient instead of deficient. And then we're making sure that we're eating enough plants. But here's the other benefit to that. Not only are plants high in fiber, and by the way, some grains are full of fiber too, like oat bran and things like this, spelt. But if we are not eating enough plants, that's gonna constipate us too, okay? You should not just be eating all meat. You need to be having a green leafy salad. You need to be having fruit like berries and bananas and mangoes. This is where we get great sources of carbohydrates from our fruits and our vegetables. That's what I highly recommend that you do. Try to be under 150 grams of carbs. Most days, some days you can go a little under, right? If you wanna do two days out of the week where you're really low carb in it, fine. But just never forget that energy cascade that I constantly talk to you about if this is the first you're hearing of me and watching this video and you don't know what I'm talking about, the energy cascade, just look through some other videos, but really quickly, we get our energy from carbohydrates because they're simple to digest. The brain is a glucose hog. It needs energy like that. And within 15 minutes in a healthy person of eating a fruit or a vegetable, you could be nourishing your brain with that energy from that carbohydrate that you just consumed. Why are carbohydrates necessary? Because they're easy to digest and they easily give the brain energy, okay? If we were meant to be eating ketogenic, then why don't we have tons of lipase enzymes in our saliva? Make no mistake, I have no problem with somebody being in urinary ketosis for a month or two. I'm in urinary ketosis for a couple of weeks every single year when I water only fast. But to be in constant urinary ketosis for months on end is a recipe for massive stress and disruption of your homeostatic rhythm. Believe me when I tell you that. The body is not meant to run on fat for fuel only. Further, when you use fat for fuel, the capacity and the capability of your body to use the fat for energy is going to diminish your essential compounds that are created by fat. So when you're drawing down that gas tank reserve of fat for energy, your ability to make those essential compounds, which are things like myelin, cholesterol, fatty acids, prostaglandins, thr uh, thromboxanes, leukotrienes, these are compounds made by fats. You're gonna be drawing down that capacity as well. Doesn't make sense. Carbohydrates, they give you energy, that's it. Proteins, the queen, the king of all nutrients. It does massive amounts of function, like making hemoglobin, thyroxin, insulin, epinephrine, and so on, your neurotransmitters, and helps to regulate homeostasis, your body's natural healing rhythm. And then the hardest nutrient to digest are fats. These are gonna be your butters, your oils, your egg yolks, your nuts. Yes, these are amazing foods that you need to consume. I'm just letting you know what types of foods make up fats, but fats have their own set of things that they create that proteins and, and carbohydrates do not. Like I mentioned, myelin, phospholipids, uh, prostaglandins, fatty acids, cholesterol, and so on, okay? So how we reverse constipation is we make sure that we're digesting our food, take a good quality enzyme. Here is my custom formula, Smart Carb. You can find out more about that by going to smartdigestion.com. Next, we wanna make sure that our stomach acid is where it needs to be because this is key to everything. Both one and two are key to so many different complaints that my patients have. And then obviously number three is making sure you're eating enough plants. So things like peas and raspberries and, and, and pears and um, you know your salads, these are in lentils and beans. These are amazing, incredible forms of not only 
complex carbs and not only proteins in some examples, but also they're great sources of fiber. That is my video for right now. The takeaway point from, for you is if you tried all these different things and you're really, really frustrated and you don't know how to break through, this is why I am here. Please work with me. I can get you straightened out if you have constipation. And that's by looking at what's happening with that energy assessment that I do with my very unique testing. And I'm looking at a bunch of different criteria, whether you're local or long distance, I can work with you. The first step is for us to get on the phone together and get a game plan. And I invite you to do that by going to longdistancedoc.com, longdistancedoc.com. Also, you could call us at 586-685-2222. Remember, when we're talking constipation, we're talking undigested food, deficient stomach acid, which is going to, which is going to mess with your bio flow. And then obviously we're looking at fiber. That's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the text community is always available to you as well. Text digestion to that number, which I'll have on the screen right now. I will see you next week. As always, love yourself healthy. It's the very first thing that you can do every single day. That's it for now. Talk later.